Welcome back. In this section, we are going to talk about interoperability in metaverse. And we already spoke about that interoperability is very much important because again, it's a part of one of the principles that we spoke about the seven principles. And interoperability actually helps different ecosystems to interact with each other. It also provides a seamless experience for the user that they do not have to be bind by certain uh, kind of a restriction or certain platform. So interoperability and standardization will be the key to metaverse success. Why are we saying it? Because the moment this metaverse grows bigger, there will be multiple companies getting into the hardware, the software, the platform, the software platform, the APIs and everything else. So unless we have an interoperability into different systems, right? For example, it's not like that if you only wear this company glass, you can uh, say experience meta. Or if you're wearing this kind of an experience uh, glass, you can experience say something else right it should be just like a mobile phone that if, if you have a mobile phone you have an internet connection you can actually access anything which is your internet right it, it, it cannot restrict that if you have this uh, company's smartphone you cannot access this website right so something of that sort plus uh, there should be a platform of interoperability as well which means that for example if you're on facebook and if you want to go on a twitter you can just say walk up right walk to the nearest it could be a possibility i'm just kind of imagining there is a Facebook kind of a room. You you go there, you interact with everyone in Facebook, then you come out and then there's a Twitter, right? So, so those kind of things can also happen. So here, uh, what we mean by that, and then standardization has to be there. When I say standardization, which means that each uh, platform which operates in Metaverse should have a standardization to accept the responses, to store the data, to process the data, to speak to each other uh, system, to do a handshake of the system so that the user does not feel that, okay, now I have moved from one experience to another experience. It has to be absolutely seamless. And that can only happen if there is a standardization. So again, harmonize different technological building blocks at different stages of development and ensure the interoperability of the various services. So as well, harmonize different technological building blocks. When I say building blocks, it's APIs, infrastructures, servers, cloud, and everything else. So we have to create a, a parallel system. We have to create a standardization where kind of different institutions or different systems can interact with each other. 5G's increased technological maturity and power will improve bandwidth while reducing network saturation and latency, right? It is very much important. Just imagine that, for example, you're experiencing something in a Facebook or you're experiencing something in a Twitter or you are, say, dating someone right on a tender kind of a metaverse or on a bumble or something from some other kind of a dating site and suddenly what happens there is a slow movement right because of the internet latency and because of that saturation that everything start moving slow and then you have a different experience right so you do not want that and hence everybody's bullish that 5g's increased technological maturity and power will fuel it and it will it will kind of feel as if you are in the in the in the face to face conversation and there is nothing uh, nothing like a latency or digital world, right? And hence, we also spoke about edge computing, which actually adds value to the same point. Then interoperability and standardization will ensure different protocols are followed and a standard experience is offered, just like currently internet. Which means that the moment, say, you or me or anyone, uh, say, accesses Google, right? Every it, it will look like the same. You can have, say, a similar experience, right? Depending on which country you are in, mostly it will be exactly the same, right? So, so that kind of experience we are talking about, that currently as internet gives the seamless experience, it's not like that if someone has a lot of money, he will see a different type of Google and someone who does not have a money will see a different Google. Someone, uh, say, in a different part of the country will see different. So those kind of things are not there. Standardization is there. Mostly it is exactly the same. So the same way we are expecting the metaverse to be there as well. And following the different protocols even means that even though different, a say metaverse can be developed on different technology platform, but there has to be an interoperability and acceptance towards each other's protocol. So some of the, I would say, tools that are being used are virtual reality modeling language, which is also called VRML, collaborative design activity, which is also called Colada, are interchange formats to ensure easier exchange of goods and behaviors from one virtual world to another. So these are certain languages which helps to create an interoperable and standard formats, right? 
And I will also talk about one of the institutions which is actually working on interoperability and standardization in metaverse. So that is also there. So these languages helps to create those protocols and standardization language which can actually help uh, different uh, uh, platforms to create standard uh, ecosystem. Then protocol standard enables interactive and transactional contract between a virtual world user and a server, which means that if there is a standardization and uh, if I am from a different plat metaverse platform, what I can do is that the protocols are same. Whatever I have purchased in the different metaverse or for example, if I have purchased some say a uh, virtual cloth on Facebook, I can wear that cloth and move to Twitter as well. But that can only happen if there is a standard protocol, if that asset is also recognized in Twitter. It cannot happen that, for example, if you have purchased some uh, clothes, you can only wear in Facebook, a kind of a metaverse. You cannot wear that in Twitter or some other kind of social thing, right? So in order to have that, there has to be an interoperability so that a customer or the user is able to uh, carry their experience across different uh, I would say uh, set up or different metaverses. Locator standard helps in finding places and landmarks across virtual world. Just imagine what we are talking about here, a locator could be a Google map, right? So even in your physical world, you use Google map to reach from uh, place A to place B. So a standard locator in a virtual metaverse will help someone to reach to different experience, to reach to different places. But again, a lot of standardization needs to be there, Google map, has a monopoly mostly on, on, on mapping thing, on Google map, on the uh, location. So similar if Google is able to do in Metaverse, that will be a great thing. Otherwise, we need a, a, an interoperable locator so that we can navigate through different experiences. And an identity standard gives a user unique credential that can be used across virtual world boundaries, which means we talked about the national ID numbers, right? Social security numbers or whatever numbers that has been given to you by your government, right? But you cannot use uh, kind of the same number to avail services in different countries. To much extent, yes, if there's a national ID, we use that as a say passport if you're traveling to different countries. But just imagine if there's a unique ID which is there on Facebook, which does not work on Twitter, right? So which means that if you might be someone uh, like a ABC in uh, Facebook and the moment you come out from ABC, you may have to wear a different personality when you go to a platform like XYZ, right? So it cannot happen. It has to be a unique standard because I can be the same person in the physical world, right? I'm the same person which I'm going to uh, a movie hall or to my office or to, to college or anywhere else, right? I, I do not change my name every time I go somewhere, right? So it has to be exactly the same, I would say, experience that the person has a unique identity no matter which experience he or she is visiting, right? And then a currency standard will define the value of virtual objects and creations, thus enabling their trade and exchange. This is a very important point, which means, for example, if there's no uh, currency, I would say standardization, for example, I'm using a different currency, which has a different value. Your currency has a different value. Now we have to buy certain things. Uh, and, and since it will be a connected world, I can go ahead and buy certain things. But there, if, if the, the price of the currency is changing, it will be really tough to come up that how much of this token I have to give, how much of that NFT I have to take, how much token that USD I have to give, and what more kind of different currencies that we have to give. And in hence, a currency standard will be useful. Or for example, an on-the-go currency exchange as well. For example, let's say if I'm using a Bitcoin, and if a, if a, if a property or say if a, some asset is of say one Bitcoin, what I can do, uh, and if I don't have a Bitcoin, what I say is that, okay, I don't have a Bitcoin, but I have Ethereum or I have Dogecoin or I have Decentraland or I have Mana or a kind of an Axie or something else. So what he does that, okay, you, it is uh, now costing at say one Bitcoin. Let me uh, use a currency converter and you can pay me that one. So those kind of things happen, right? Even the physical ones, whenever we travel outside, there's a currency exchange that happens. But the standardization is very much important. Then. There will be different metaverses, hence a cross metaverse bridge will be required. With so many social media pl platforms, do we have the interoperability now? No, so we don't know how we are going to achieve that in metaverse. Right? But I am sure bigger companies will not agree to having a one metaverse. So maybe Facebook will have a different metaverse, Twitter will have a different metaverse, and uh, say some other, uh, LinkedIn will have a different metaverse. So which means that a cross metaverse bridge is required. 
But our question is that with so many social media platforms existing for so long, have they achieved intolerability so far? I have to create a separate uh, details for LinkedIn, for uh, Facebook, for Twitter, for something else, right? So if we were not able to do that in a social media platform now, do you think we'll be able to do that in Metaverse? Where stakes are higher, where prices are higher, where there is a lot of money. So that, that's a point that we want to raise. But yeah, as I talked about that, we are talking about one of the institution which is working on interoperability and standardization, and that is called uh, Open Metaverse Interoperability Group, uh, which works and develops collaborative frameworks and bridge between different metaverses, which means that, and there's a website which has been created as well. So uh, there's a link at the bottom which says opencollective.com O-M-I-G group. So again, uh, this, this creates different interoperability standard that for example, if they create a standard and uh, say Facebook also follows it, uh, LinkedIn also follows it, Twitter also follows it. So what happens is that following that standard, a user will not face any problem. They will be able to transport or they will be able to teleport all their assets from one experience to another to somewhere else as well. So hence, they are working on solving that problem. So I'm sure that with these kind of institutions already in play, you might have realized that Metaverse has traveled already a long end. Uh, we are just trying to catch up, but you are not late. You, are, you have just picked it up at the right point. Uh, so now, uh, so it, it also helps that how the uh, experience can be made interoperable from the application, browser to virtual reality or all other gears. For example, let's say if someone is not able to buy virtual gears, right? So what are different other headgears or the, uh, I would say tools or application or web through which uh, uh, the user can participate into that metaverse. It should not happen that unless you, if you don't have a met, uh, if you don't have a headset, VR headset, you cannot participate into it. For example, integrating Zoom into metaverse is one of the exam. Uh, I would say one of the case where Zoom as an application has to integrate into metaverse so that there are few avatars in the metaverse workroom, and then there's a Zoom call as well to meet some of the real life users. So, so those kind of things can also happen, but without interoperability it is absolutely not possible and without interoperability the metaverse is creating self-contained virtual ecosystem as it exists right now so if there is no interoperability uh, it will be very i would say uh, costly for a user to say uh, visit some some place they have to to say uh, buy certain other i would say digital uh, products or assets and to experience or to go to another uh, I would say uh, set up, they have to buy something else. So it will be costier for them and ultimately if the cost is very high, users will start feeling demotivated and they will never buy or they will never experience the metaverse anymore. So it has to be simpler, it has to be lucrative enough for a user to start working or start accepting or start experiencing that metaverse. And I'm sure that once they get accustomed to it, once they get habituated to it, they will be able to pour money right similar to as we know that we do not pay for facebook we don't pay for linkedin so it is easy for us it is free for us we all accept it we all uh, spend a lot of time onto it instagram we spend a lot of time onto it and because it is free and we kind of uh, 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 we kind of create our own personality there as well so that is another reason which metaverse will have to mimic in their digital ecosystem as well and without interoperability we can't move items such as skins when I say skins, it's just like how you look like, uh, those kind of things. Then between games or social platforms on different chains and the avatars activities would be restricted to a single world, right? Just imagine that you have taught the machine through artificial intelligence and machine learning that this is my personality, this is how I believe or this is how I behave in, 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 a, in a setup, right? And then machine of that, say Facebook has learned that. Now what happens? Now you said, okay, let me go to Twitter now. And the moment you go to Twitter, the activities are not captured because of these are two different experiences, right? So which means that the user now will have to go to uh, Twitter and then the machine has to be trained on their activities as happens now, right? We have a different profile on LinkedIn or Facebook, Google, everywhere else. So that is one of the things that we have to take care of. We have very high expectation, not sure if Metaverse will be able to achieve everything, but these are certain things which Unless these things are met, Metaverse will not be, uh, I would say, a big thing. It will just remain as a fad with some of, uh, some of the people who are excited about this Metaverse.
and if the avatar's activities is restricted in a single or few of the worlds, then it defeats the point of the metaverse as a collection of interconnected virtual communities. So the purpose of metaverse is that you create a virtual and interconnected community. So hence, unless you provide a seamless, I would say handshake, seamless transfer from one experience or one platform to another, metaverse will not work. It will not find a space or it will not, I would say, stay there for longer. It will just fade away, right? Even the Google Glasses started off, but I think they were ahead of their time or something of that sort. Could not pick up, right? So it could be a case that Metaverse might not pick up unless that becomes economical, unless that becomes interoperable and standardization is there between different application protocols and platforms. So that's all in this chapter. See you in the next chapter. Till the time, take care and see you there. Thank you. Welcome back. In this section, we are going to talk about values and interoperability in metaverse so let us find out what are those values and which institution is defining the values and interoperability into the system there is an institution which has already been created and it is open metaverse interoperability group this group is responsible to bring in inter operability within metaverse as we discussed that interoperability is very much important in metaverse we took an example that if someone is uh, planning to go from a linkedin metaverse to a facebook metaverse to a twitter metaverse or any other metaverse there has to be an interoperability otherwise people will not be able to move their skin their avatar their position from one experience of metaverse to another experience and hence it is important to have an interoperability and it also provides an open system for everyone to enter metaverse and that is also one of the seven principles that we spoke about so this institution the open metaverse interoperability group is focused on bridging virtual worlds by designing and promoting protocols for identity social graphs inventory and many more that we have spoken about in the last chapters there is a website, the link is mentioned. You can go to that link and you can find out more about this institution. So if this institution has been developed and the need has already been, I would say, identified for the open interoperability, just imagine, just think that we are already at a much advanced level where we have started thinking about the interoperability. And these things doesn't happen at a nascent stage unless an institution or an industry has evolved to a certain extent, we do not talk about these things because early in, the, in the nascent stage, everybody talks about technology, how to get there. And once you settle in, that's when you start talking about privacy, rights, open, fair ecosystem, which means that this metaverse is already beyond the nascent stage and it is already shaping up to become a matured ecosystem. So let's find out what are those values defined by OMIG or open metaverse interoperability group or OMI. So the first one is make the metaverse more human, which means that even though it is a digital world where everyone is playing a, a game kind of a thing. Why? Because you are an avatar and you are playing a game, right? You, you are just interacting with someone uh, and you are just buying some positions, but then it has to be more human. It cannot be so digital that even the emotions and even every transaction is happening on the basis of profit or a transaction perspective, right? So we want to carry the human emotions from the physical world to the digital world as well. So here, o, what OMI does is that they collaborate uh, driven by the research, privacy and accessibility, which means that these are certain things which create human values and OMIG is already working on that. Second is maintain sustainable innovation, which means that any innovation should not be short-lived for a limited, I would say, time or for certain profit. It has to be sustainable, which means it should go for a longer period of time. As we discussed that a, minting a token requires a lot of electricity. What does it mean? It means that it is not a sustainable method to transact, right? Because if that happens, very few will actually invest money into it. Actually, someone who has a surplus income or someone who wants to do a betting will be able to do that, right? Because it's not a sustainable uh, ecosystem to spend so much of electricity to mint one token. 
So how OMI is contributing to it? By creating a cooperative, sustainable culture of innovations. Then the next one is cultivate resiliency, which means that by, by championing the freedom of choice and diversity, we will cultivate a culture which will be built on resiliency, which means that we will have choice, we will have diversity. It cannot be a club of chosen few people. It has to be open. It has to be diverse so that anyone from any walk of life can be there and contribute to the ecosystem as we do into the real lives. So we have to, I would say, mimic or maybe make it better because we now we have a choice to make our own world and let us make it a way which is more human, which is more uh, ideal that we want to live in rather than a very different kind of a world which we do not want to live in. Next value is incentivize contributions, which means by in empowering the people and uh, who are making the metaverse, uh, we need to incentivize them, right? Because unless you incentivize those people who are the creators or who are the innovators into the space, they will stop innovating and they will start finding short ways or the shortcuts to uh, make profits, right? But then if they are getting incentivized to do right things or the correct things, that's when they will start contributing to the metaverse and hence that ecosystem will grow, will become more, I would say, human friendly and will be more exciting where people want to live, people want to spend their time. Consistently deliver value, which means that the metaverse should not be like that. It, if, for example, for a certain period of time they are delivering value and uh, after a certain point of time there is no value for most of the people, right? There could be value for few people, but not for everyone. So OMI uh, group is also ensuring that uh, they discover and deliver value with intent, which means there has to be an intention, there has to be a purpose to deliver the value. It should not be that uh, you just putting in anything into that metaverse because it is making profit, right? It has to be an intention. And definitely if it is a group which has a noble, uh, I would say intention, which means that everything which is being done in metaverse should have a noble intention keeping human factor into mind. So this is uh, Open Metaverse Interoperability Group, which has already started to uh, create an ecosystem or interoperability between different metaverses, between offline and online world. So that's all in this section. See you in the next chapter. Till the time, take care and see you there. Thank you.